boy, which could mean possible criminal charges against the Neighbourhood Watch volunteer who shot him. The Justice Department is also now investigating why George Zimmerman, reportedly a serial 911 caller, pursued, shot and killed Trayvon Martin, despite 911 officials telling him to stand back. Zimmerman has claimed since under a Florida law that allows a person to stand his ground if he believes himself in imminent peril. A version of events that the chill, chilling 911 tapes appear to contradict. Joining us now, Democratic Congresswoman Gwen Moore of Wisconsin. Good afternoon, Ms. Ms. Moore. Oh, good afternoon, Martin. Thank you for having me. Thank you. There are now two investigations into this terrible incident. And as the days pass, we keep hearing evidence which suggests that this young man did absolutely nothing to provoke the attack. A witness has said today that she was on the phone with Trayvon at the time and he told her that he was being followed. What possible explanation is there for why this young man was shot at? Martin, let, just let me tell you that these are kind of vigilante uh, laws and arguments are popping up all over the country. And while we really do respect a real, uh, genuine right to self-defense, and we certainly respect neighborhood watch programs, I think that what we're beginning to see uh, with some of these laws, like the one we have in Wisconsin, this, and this Florida stand your ground law, and a castle law, where your home is your castle, so no matter what, you're, you're able to use deadly force against someone, uh, is is something that is egregious and has grown out of this notion that there are no holes barred with your right uh, to bear arms. I do, uh, I'm very grateful that the Justice Department uh, and uh, the judges in Florida are willing to look at this because we have absolutely uh, got to draw a line in the sand around legitimate neighborhood watch activities and self-defense programs and actual just straight out murder uh, of, of a young teenager. A number of our viewers who both comment on our Facebook page, on our Twitter account, they seem to be suggesting that this is the price that a young black man has to pay simply by dint of his color, that he must be covered in suspicion because he walks to buy some candy. Well, Martin, I'll tell you, this young teenager uh, from news, uh, from media reports, was in a gated community, a community where there weren't many African-American teenagers. Uh, and so, you know, on the one hand, uh, we can understand uh, that Mr. Zimmerman might have been suspicious, but other reports that have demonstrated that this young man uh, was being pursued and wasn't really doing anything to draw uh, gunfire for Mr. Zimmerman is extremely suspicious and that's why I think it's extremely important to have law enforcement investigate it. Even as you speak and you and I have this conversation, the press conference is going on at this very moment with colleagues from the House who are talking about the Justice Department's investigation. Can I ask, is it really appropriate for a man who allegedly shot this 17-year-old young man to death, is it appropriate for him still to be at large? Well, I can tell you that uh, there are different kinds of justice. You know, in the African-American community, you're, <laughs> you're often presumed to be guilty before you're found to be innocent. You know, I don't want to second guess uh, what the police department uh, has done and, and Mr. Zimmerman's rights, but I can tell you that uh, justice is just not the same uh, in, in every um, uh, aspect of our, of our neighborhoods and our communities in this country. Sadly, a long way to go. Congresswoman Gwen more. Thank you very much for joining and us. And thank you, Martin. Now it's back to the race for 2012, and here are today's